Picture of his daughter Cameron on there who's graduating high school in Mason, Ohio Sunday afternoon. Okay, so he's guys, leaving immediately after this fight room. to be there for either, her. Any punches on either one of the belt lines, I'm going to consider a legal punch. I want you to obey my commands and give me a good, clean fight. Touch him up, scoop back. So here's the return of Jamel Herring against Jermaine Ortiz, Timmy, a 15-0-1 fighter who's very confident that he can get to the next level. Yeah, he's very confident, but I'm wondering which Ortiz is going to come out. I've seen two variations of him. I've seen him be aggressive and highly motivated, throwing combinations, and I've also seen him fight off his back foot and kind of stink up the joint. So curious to see what he's going to be doing tonight. You know, it's interesting because when we went through the strategy, of what he would employ against Herring, you got the sense he would box more and not be the typical pressure guy who we've seen probably more often in the past. See, the coolest thing right now is he came out in the southpaw stance, That's Ortiz. Right. He can switch stances. He's he naturally right-handed, but he will, in other sports, he throws a ball left-handed. It's funny, and I asked him in the fighter meeting, I said, well, which stance are you going to come out in? And he's kind of grinned at me, and I had a feeling he would fight out of the southpaw stance because... Herring, he struggles with southpaws. All of his losses have come from southpaws. Of course, he's coming off the loss to Shakur Stevenson, the current unified world champion. That was last October Ooh. in Atlanta. It's a beautifully timed shot right over the top of the low left hand or the low guard of Ortiz. That's timing and experience from Herring who now is choosing to be the hunter. Ortiz, he got his attention. Ortiz now is choosing to be the boxer. Jamel Herring now trained by Manny Robles. He was with Brian McIntyre, Bo Mack, for eight fights with the Bud Crawford camp. What do you think of that move going with Manny now? Watch your head. Ain't nothing wrong head. with that. Bo Mack and them, they great. They do a great, great job with their fighters out there. But, you know, new weight class, newfound motivation, coming out of sunny California, easy to make the new weight class at 135 pounds. Manny Robles is a, a renowned trainer as well. Great move. Stop. Right. Ortiz switching stances already. Back to orthodox. Okay. One, two from Herring. Now trying to place that left hand to the body and the back end of the jab. See, that's what I like from Herring right out the gate. He said he wanted to start faster. Yes, he wants to take the initiative. You know, that's being first. That's what we call in boxing, being Stop. first. Ooh, headbutt. Be careful, guys. You guys are coming in. Come on, keep it clean. So you might see a lot of that test because Ortiz is spontaneous. He'll, he'll just explode with offense out of nowhere, try to catch you off guard, off, off rhythm. Ortiz trying to place that right hook in the midst of that exchange. Ten seconds. Coming to the end of round number one between Herring and Ortiz, live here from Resorts World in Vegas. Time. Joe, Tim, Mark, and Marley Rivera with you here in Vegas. Round number two, Jamel Herring in that first round enjoyed a 15 to seven connect advantage. Jermaine Ortiz heard from a very calm trainer, Rocky stop, Gonzalez, stop, right. after that first round. And as he was discussing the switching of stances and what they prefer, Jamel Herring, Manny Robles now training him. He says, you know, you look at Ortiz, a little careless, and that's what makes him dangerous. Stop. Yeah, he was basically talking about what I was saying. He's, he's spontaneous. He'll just explode with offense out of nowhere and attack you with an 18-punch combination. <laughs> Did right now, see? hands low, bouncing in and out, Stop. trying to time Stop. that right hand. And the heads are coming together a bit when he's orthodox against that southpaw stance of Herring. See, this is what I was talking about. Ortiz, you know, he was a fighter that come forward and was high volume. He's not a big, big puncher, but he used a lot of volume in combinations when I first saw him some years ago but now he's turning into more of a boxer. He says, I don't want to get hit too often. He said, I want to mix it up. I want to use my feet to create some offense for myself. Keep him up. Keep Both him up. guys 
trying to work on the inside. <laughs> Both men trying to find success to the body. See the older dog sitting down on his shots, digging down to the body, trying to take the legs away and some steam off the punches of Ortiz. And also sending a message, Tess. He's sending a message and letting them know, like, hey, yeah, you might be young. That's all right. You let your hand go. I can let my hands go, too. I still got it. Ten-year age difference between these two, Herring and Ortiz. You got to keep them up. Of course, Herring had the long amateur career, was also serving our country. He was a 2012 Olympian. Nine years of service as a Marine. Tours of Iraq. 2005 2007 was a gunner on a Humvee. And he has often detailed some of the terror of what he says was being a sitting duck at times in enemy territory. Right hand comes in from Ortiz. Beautiful combination. Came in behind the jab. Followed up with right hand and another jab in the right hand. And now turns southpaw and he hits the gas pedal with herring up against the ropes. And these are those bursts of offense that you were just describing, Timmy. And see, and that's how you get the attention of the judges, and that's how you're going to win these. That's how he's going to win these rounds. Oh, oh right hand comes in from Ortiz. Top ranked boxing on ESPN is brought to you by Die Hard Batteries and Advanced Auto Parts. As everybody this week was celebrating the 20th anniversary of Gaddy Ward 1. Mohegan Sun, I can remember where I was standing, ringside, taking it all in. How the energy in that room was utterly incredible. Hard to believe 20 years have passed since Gaddy Ward. It was a big right hand that closed out that second round for Jermaine Ortiz that he was able to land. One of his nine power punches. Here it is, Timmy. Yeah, that's the best punch to land against the southpaw. Straight right hand. He flanked it with a nice jab just to get the attention and get the eyes of Herring looking at the jab and then snuck the right hand right behind it. Beautiful shot right there by Ortiz. So Jamel Herring got off to a good start in round number one, and then Ortiz comes back with a much better second round, capped by that in the final five seconds of round number two. Let's check in with Mark Kriegel. Spoke to Manny Stop. Robles. I said, what does Jamel have to do? He says, take control of the center of the ring. Establish that he's the go. boss here. Yeah, he do need to take control of the ring. But with how he takes control, that's important. He needs to use his jab. And he needs to time the younger fighter. Time his rushes. Good defense right there from Herring. But no return fire. Tried to time a left hand. I got you. As Ortiz I got you. came in. See, Ortiz, when he lets off offense, then he steps back, he gets relaxed. That's the time to attack him. Okay, get off, play defense, but then come right back with your offense. You're holding. You're holding. Ortiz is from a big family. He's from Puerto Rican and Dominican descent. He's one of seven. He went to the Worcester Boys and Girls Club in Central Mass when he was seven years old. Lost his dad when he was 15 years old. And here he is 11 years later, an unbeaten pro with the biggest opportunity of his career. Reminder, you see it up there on the screen two weeks from tonight. It is the undisputed lightweight title fight live from Melbourne, Australia. Timmy Mark and I will be ringside to call it. George Cambosis against Devin Haney. Devin Haney from right here in Vegas. His dad, Bill, is sitting just off to the side of us right now. That is some of the news this week is Bill due to a visa issue, will not be with his son. So here's Devin Haney in the biggest moment of his career, heading off to take on that challenge. Rival territory in a stadium environment against Kembosis. That's going to be live on ESPN on Saturday night, June 4th from Australia. Herring trying to dig underneath with that you, left hand to the body. And that's how you tame the young guy from keeping him from jumping in and exploding offense. You go down to the body and downstairs like that. He has to respect that. Because you got to think about it. It's double impact. He's coming forward and then you're sitting down on that shot as he comes in. Gets one right here for the low blow. Robert Hoyle, third man inside the ropes between Ortiz 
and Heron, the return of the recent champ after his title loss to Shakur Stevenson. Resorts World Events Center, round four here between Ortiz and Herring. Let's check in with Marley. And Joe, we've talked about the age difference between the 26-year-old Jermaine Ortiz and, of course, Herring at 36. But Ortiz is not your typical 26-year-old. He has been someone who had to mature very quickly. He has a seven-year-old daughter. Her name is Amira. And you can check out Jermaine Ortiz's Instagram. It's full of Amira pictures. They do a lot of uh, daddy-daughter uh, <laughs> posing, and they have a lot of fashion out there. And he says, I do everything for Amira, and I am here to steal the show. His biggest inspiration, but in that undercard with legends like like Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., who he considers a hero. Marley, you know he's very dedicated to his family and to his education. He's at Worcester State University. He said, hey, who knows? Down the road, med school could be an option for me. Boy, those heads keep coming close and coming together, don't they, Timmy? Yes, they are. And it's going to continue to happen. That happens with the Southpaw and Orthodox fighters. You know, you, the, the power hand lines up on the same side. So when any 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 time they look to throw punch punching power, which is their backhands, their heads are going to come together. Herring now back at 135 pounds, That's where he started his career. Of course, his success was found at 130 pounds. Won a title there against Ito back in 2019, then had his most impressive performance of his career. In April of 2021, the TKO of the two-division world champ, Carl Frampton, that was over in Dubai. A six-round TKO. I, I thought the best he's ever looked that night. The total mix, the total package with the aggression and showcasing the power. I agree with that 100%. You can see in the older fighter right now, dictate to pace and starting to walk down Ortiz. And what changed this for him during this round is, is the body attack. That's the key. That's how you get Ortiz to corroborate. You hit him down to the body. Nice shot, sneak shot right there I got you. I got over you the top of Ortiz. But if you hit, bang him down to the body, he's going to sit still. And that betters his chances, Harry's chances, to land something even harder up top. Harry is a way better you, inside fighter Come on, no, don't talk. than Ortiz. Ten seconds. A lot stronger inside the pocket as well. That's where he should operate. End of four here in Vegas. Total punches as we begin round number five. Jamel Herring has a 45 to 41 connect advantage. Jamel Herring heard from his trainer, Manny Robles. He wants him to go to the body, then finish up top to the head. They have been stressing be first, be last. Speaking of body punches, there are the copy box tallies for the work to the body for each man. A little extra something between Ortiz and Herring. Remember, our title fight is coming up. Unique circumstances with it being a WBO interim title, but the WBO champion Demetrius Andrade is moving up to super middleweight so so much on the line tonight and that guy you see right there decked out in the bright red that is danny dignam the 14 0 one fighter from essex england the southpaw who feels very confident he has tons of respect for janibek ali mahanala but he feels very confident that he's put himself in position to pull off this upset tonight Janabek has been a terror. He's been so impressive. Quickly running his mark to 11-0 with seven knockouts. Herring's dropping his hands. Once he gets to the mid-range, he's dropping his hands. He's getting clipped on the way in. Ortiz is seeing him walk straight through the front door without shooting a jab, and he's catching him as he's coming in. Now both guys are choosing to stay close and fight inside the pocket. Ortiz is not looking to be forced back. 
not looking to be forced back right now. He's looking to stand his ground. Ortiz had success in that southpaw stance, doubling up the right hook to the body and to the head two times. Now back orthodox. Starting to see a little fatigue right now, a little drag in Herring already. Not sure what it is. Could it be the age? But his punches are not as sharp as they, as they were a few rounds ago. And he's missing a lot of his shots, which is an indication he may be tired. Off his neck, off his neck. Cut him out, cut him out. Ortiz fills that gap right there at that moment. You see right here, this is the youth right here coming through for Ortiz. He's a tad bit quicker. Good Woo! left hand. Yes. He's able to get in and out. Has a little bit more juice, a little bit more zap in his attacks. Taking advantage of the low points right now from Herring. Tim, what did you think of Manny Robles telling Jamel Herring, you have to take the initiative, you have to commit, you got to let those hands go. Well, I like it. He, he's telling him he's coming forward, but he's not taking the initiative. He's allowing Ortiz to get off, and he's not getting off first. He's not dictating the pace at which the fight should be fought for him. Now, you got a young Ortiz now. After that last round, he's more confident now, and he's coming forward in pressing. I got you. And taking I got initiative. You. I got you. Thank you for keeping it clean. That was the first try, uh, first round that Rocky Gonzalez, Jermaine's trainer, was happy. He said he was busier. He took charge. He had a 19 to 11 connected advantage. He was 12 of 24 on his power punches. Had that solid left hand there in round number five. Jermaine Ortiz, the unbeaten fighter from New England says this is going to be the night where I'm put into the conversation. Stop, stop, stop. You look at the work rate and the punches landed by round and you can see the increase in productivity for Ortiz. Stop. Let's break. And Herring has started to diminish slowly. test when you take the initiative now you get your opponent to react to you Ortiz will react to him if Herring was to take the initiative now once you take the initiative you got to be ready to counter because you're going to get a response you're going to draw something so when Ortiz makes a move that's when it's time for Herring to make a miss and then make him pay that's what his trainer is trying to get him to do but his body is not responding oh nice there's a left uppercut, uppercut. From Jamel Herring. He just timed that uppercut very well. Experience can pay off, can overcome some of what we're talking about. Yes. Some of the, what you say, perhaps some not being there physically the whole way. Experience versus youth. That was a good example of it right there. What is it about? You see Ortiz, his head leans forward. His head goes first before his punches come out. That's the reason you're getting these head clashes. And of course, you have the southpaw in orthodox stance. You're always going to clash heads. But your head is always on the line of fire. Well, let's keep it clean. Back up a little bit for me. Just off to the side of Resorts World Las Vegas. This is their events center. Place hasn't even been open for a year yet. And already our second visit with primetime boxing. Top rank here in action with Jamel Herring's return against a very determined Jermaine Ortiz. In that last round, give credit to Herring for placing that left uppercut, Timmy. Beautiful left uppercut right up the middle, timing the rush of Ortiz. You see the head of Ortiz coming forward. Herring recognizing it, 
stepping oh, back, creating don't, distance, don't keep him in front. Stop. being the counter puncher that he keep is, setting up that beautiful counter left uppercut. Round number seven scheduled for 10. Then we will have the two unbeatens in the ring to fight for a belt. WBO interim middleweight title is on the line between Janabek, Janabek Alhamra, and Danny Dignam. That is coming up. Manny Robles, after that last round, told Jamel Herring, you have to stay busy. You must stay busy. Through a fight high 48 punches in the first round, last round, he was off that mark, throwing 36. Come on, you're holding. You're holding. Ortiz choosing to fight out the southpaw stance right now. Confusing Herring a tad bit. Herring can't land as often as he would like to. And you see the bouncing right here. Now Ortiz, what he's doing, he's changing his rhythm. He's trying to make himself unpredictable, trying to hide his offense or when he's going to explode with offense. He's been switching stances since early on in this fight. Hands down, bounce. bouncing on his toes, darting in and out. Yep. Throwing the lead left hand out of that southpaw stance occasionally. Hands down as he's bouncing and darting in and out. You'll be amazed when you drop your hands how how your opponent react. Truly be amazed. You can actually slow him down. You know. It's confusing a bit when you see your opponent's hands down. You're wondering why is his hands down, and you're afraid to actually exchange with him. See, creating a small hesitation in Herring. They're holding. They're holding. Ten seconds. Then he digs in on the clap and does this to the bell. Anything right here is a legal punch. Legal punch. Anything below that's low. Keep him up. Let's go. Robert Hoyle with the reminder as he put out the warnings for the low blow. Right now, Jermaine Ortiz on total punches has a slight edge 82 to 77 in punches connected. He's thrown 50 more punches. That Harry. Round number eight. Come on, you're holding. You're holding. You know, Rocky Gonzalez doesn't mind Jermaine bouncing around like he did the last round, changing the rhythm. Just if he's going to do it, throw some punches, get busy. That didn't happen until the final moments, Mark, of Watch that last round. Watch your head. We're showing you the output, the punches by round. Let's update that number for you. You see Herring tailed off in that seventh round. Indication he's starting to tire, Tess. That's what it is. Remember, at the conclusion of this co-feature, we will get to the rising star in the middleweight division, Janabek Alim Hanala. His last you. fight was a TKO win over Hassan Endam. He was very impressive prior to that, dismantling a titleist in Rob Brandt. Had a tremendous amateur career as a 2016 Olympian, and now fighting for a belt against Danny Dignam. Trained by Buddy McGirt. As the advisor and management of Igis Klamis, who works with the Sony Lomachenko and Alexander Usyk, everything is lined up for Janabek. Now he has to deliver against a determined Brit here in Vegas. A lot of defense from Herring. Herring just needs to let his hands go. Ortiz. Not disguising, really, you're disguising the attacks. He's attacking the same way. He's bouncing, bouncing, and then he explodes. 
and leaves himself wide open right down the middle. And you don't see Herring taking advantage of that. Instead, he's retreating, trying not to get hit with combinations from Ortiz. Ortiz is just a tad bit quicker, athletic, younger, and energetic right now. We'll tell you what Ortiz said about that, the strong statement he made about that youth advantage when we come back. There's 26-year-old Jermaine Ortiz, 10 years younger than the recent world champion, Jamel Herring, who he's six minutes away from getting to the finish line against, possibly coming up you're with holding, this win, depending holding. on how things play out. We Hands asked free. him about that. He said, listen, I'm the younger guy. I know I'm the younger guy coming up. But if I can't take out this former champ, then I need to reevaluate myself. And that was a statement that caught us off guard a little bit. Like, wow, that's how much he thinks of himself and how little he perhaps thinks of Herring. But he said, no, my expectation is to be front, world champion. So this I'm is the kind front. of fight where I must fulfill that. I have to beat a guy like Jamel Herring right now. Look, listen, I like guys that have expectations like that because he's absolutely right. This is chance right here to get in the house. He's at the door knocking. Mm -hmm. Now, if he wants to go go through the door and get in the house and become a top contender, he needs to beat Jamel Herring tonight. Keep him up. But he views himself as the distinct favorite, younger, fresher guy, who at this stage of his career, he said, I should be better than him. I am better than him. Look, Jamel done everything right this camp. You know, I, I know the fight hasn't ended yet, but I'm just telling you, you know, you get to a certain point where instead of you training harder, you got to train smarter. He did that this camp. He reserved a lot of his energy. He came in in a different weight class. He got a new team. But his body is not responding like it once was. That's the indication that the end is near. There's some good infighting from both guys, but Ortiz may have got the best of it on an early exchange on the inside. But both guys have been digging underneath, sweeping to the body. That was a short right hand from Ortiz. Let's see who's willing to work right now. There's Ortiz letting off a five-punch, six-punch combination. Trying to create a gap, fire off that left uppercut as well. Most of this ninth round spent shoulder to shoulder, spin, chest to chest. I got you, I got you. See, this type of fight right here is gonna favor Ortiz. He's the younger fighter. No push, no push. Has the fresher legs. As you can see, the veteran right here coming back, fighting with a lot of heart. Harry looking for answers. There's a left hand that comes in from Ortiz as he pushes back. Jamel Herring creates some space, gets around the guard. Herring right now, trying to use his experience right now, trying to lure in Ortiz, trying to get him to make a mistake so he can catch him and capitalize on a mistake. Catch him with something flush and hurt him. It's a good night's round for Ortiz. One round to go. Tenth and final round. Can Jermaine Ortiz finish strongly here? He's coming off by far his best round of the fight. Look at what he did in the ninth round. He was 44 of 115 punches thrown. He outlanded Herring 44 to 14 in that last round. Herring trying to respond. His mind is telling him to respond, but his body is not listening. His body is not responding right now. Herring trying to bounce back after being dismantled by Shakur Stevenson in his last fight. And Stevenson took his belt at 130 pounds. Of course, Stevenson has gone on to be a, on the pound for pound list and just unified against Oscar Valdez in another sensational performance. Sometimes you're just never the same, Timmy, after you lose like that, and then the clock keeps ticking at 36 years old. A lot of wear and tear, a lot of miles on that body of Jamel Herring, even though he started late. A lot of miles still on that body. 
Also being a Marine. One of the most likable fighters of the recent generation, Jamel Herring. Now, could this be the breakthrough moment for Jermaine Ortiz? He says it will be to put him in the conversation of the contenders. Test is not a lack of desire from Herring. At no, all. not at all. It's not a lack of desire. It's just the reflexes are not there anymore. The hand, the hand speed's not there anymore. The balance is not there. The legs are not there anymore. Final minute. The young man from Worcester, Massachusetts, who came out here to Vegas determined, ready for this chance. See how Ortiz finishes. He should let everything go. There's the clap. Jermaine Ortiz, Jermaine Ortiz. Hit that gas pedal coming down the stretch. Yes, he did. Finished the way he wanted to finish in the last two rounds. High punch output, high productivity in punches landed as it started to go the other way for the very proud former champion, Jamel Herring. Well, Tess started out well for Jamel Herring early on using his jab and occasionally straight left hand down the middle was finding his mark. But then something changed. Midway, Ortiz started finding his rhythm, started mounting his attack, started taking the initiative, throwing his combinations, getting in and out of range, frustrating, confusing the veteran, Jamel Herring. And he started landing with more regularity throughout the course of this fight. Jamel Herring tend to fade it. He faded drastically on the back end of this fight. And I believe that Ortiz did enough to win on the scorecards tonight. Ortiz landed 44 punches in that ninth round, 46 punches in the 10th round. The 46 punches in the 10th round landing is the most landed by a Herring opponent in the history of CompuBox tracking Jamel Herring fights. So that is exactly how you want to finish if you're Jermaine Ortiz. Our main event between the two undefeated for a title is coming up, but let's hear what the judges had to say right here. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Chris Migliori scores the bout 96-94. Max DeLuca and David Sutherland both score the bout 97-93. For your winner by unanimous decision, and now the NABF and USBA lightweight champion, Jermaine the Technician Ortiz! That is a quality win for Jermaine Ortiz just like he said he would. And for Jamel Herring, all the work, the new camp, the new attitude, it was a tough spot. Let's go up to the ring to Mark Kriegel. Jermaine, congratulations. Listen, 26 years old, what did you learn about yourself tonight? Uh, I still got a lot of work to do, you know. Uh, but just growing and, you know, going at the pace I'm going, I got to learn quick and I got to pick things up a little bit. But like I said, I'm not afraid of challenges and I'm here to try to prove to that I'm the best of myself, not to anybody else, you know? No, you you weren't afraid of anything tonight. I think, you know, you beat, you beat a champion tonight. Yeah. 